This is Twit. So this is the Radeon R. No, not RX. Keep trying to say that. The Radeon Vega Frontier Edition, um, mm -hmm. which is the uh, prosumer kind of in between gaming card and professional card uh, landscape. This is a this is a retail price of nine ninety nine. So it's a thousand dollar graphics card, uh, and it kind of takes after the. Uh, the Titan brand in terms of how it's supposed to operate, right? So right. Um, kind of in an in-between state, but it did it did launch yesterday officially, like went up for pre-order, went for sale. I bought one, you know, AMD didn't send this. They didn't sample anybody that I know of for, for reviews or whatnot. So we got it in today and we're going to do testing on it uh, this evening. So, you know, is this, is this the, you know, the equivalent of, it, it's not a pure professional card, right? And 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 right. what is kind of the difference between, say, you know, uh, the Vega Frontier and the Titan XP, and for that matter, uh, a Quadro line? Yeah. So it's always been kind of a nebulous conversation because right. at the at the, at the end of the day, the GPU that exists in your Quadro P five thousand and the GPU that exists on your GeForce GTX ten eighty is basically identical silicon. And right. the main differences come in qualification, come in quality control, uh, come through software, right? Like the Quadro driver will only install on Quadro cards and it has, you know, optimized uh, uh, data paths, not data paths, optimized, you know, paths for 3D Studio Max, for Maya, mm -hmm. for SolidWorks, for these types of professional level applications. That require you know more individual hands-on tuning, um, and so the that is that's more or less what you're paying for when you get like a right. Quadro brand or a Radeon, a Fire uh, what do they call it, the WX Fire Pro, whatever they happen right. to be. Um, that's that's more or less what you're paying for. And when when Nvidia launched the Titan brand many years ago now, uh, it kind of was was a little bit of both. Like for NVIDIA, it had the GeForce GTX Titan name to it. So it had GeForce and GTX as part of it. Um, but they they all of their marketing, all of their messaging uh, was that this is for developers. This is for uh, people that are that are, are just getting started with you know uh, AI development or CUDA programming or something like that, right? And and this is kind of the in between for them. But they still just ran GeForce drivers. Like you still downloaded and installed the normal GeForce driver. But mm -hmm. what NVIDIA got away with is that it was always the highest spec part, had the most memory, had the more the most compute units enabled, those types of things. And AMD never really had that type of solution until now. So now the the just like NVIDIA, this is the Radeon branded. RX Vega, uh, again, I got to take that out. It's a Radeon Vega Frontier <laughs> Edition. Vega being the architecture, the name of the GPU. Frontier Edition kind of being the uh, uh, the nomenclature of like Titan, right? Mm -hmm. So this kind of tells you that it's not a gaming card, but it's not a, uh, a Radeon Pro card. Uh, it is somewhere in between. Now, what we don't know yet is what the pedigree is going to be in terms of like its software stack. This This is not a... This does not use the the Radeon Pro driver, uh, but it doesn't really use the normal Radeon driver either because it's 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 the first one of this architecture, so it kind of has its own driver, but it's not going through the same qualification that you would require of a Pro series card. So this is kind of their in between state. Now, before before we ever started recording, you mentioned you said I said I was going to do games testing on it tonight, and you kind of said, well, you know, isn't this a professional level card? Um, and I just I don't. To me, both NVIDIA and AMD talk out of both sides of their mouth when it comes to this, right? Like with the original Titan, it was, oh, this is a pro card. So, um, you know, don't test it for gaming because it's not going to be a good value for gaming. So your performance per dollar of Titan was always bad. Um, mm -hmm. But it was the best performance of all of the, of the cards available for gaming. And I think the same thing applies here, right? So AMD is kind of going out of its way to say, this is not a gaming card. Uh, don't pay close attention to the gaming numbers. We still have you know, the Radeon RX Vega cards that are going to come out um, that are going to be gaming-centric. But there's going to be plenty of people that will buy this $999 card and expect it to, to do gaming, whether or not it's, they do development right. on, you know, at work and then they play games the other half of the day, right? Like that's that's a real that's a very realistic use case, and I still think actually, it's more um, 
it's more trying to to both of these companies trying to make sure they don't uh, uh, tick off the wrong people, right? If if the gaming performance is bad, they want to have an out that says why gaming performance yeah. is bad. If you know, if if its cost structure is poor, they want to have an excuse as to why the cost structure is poor, and that being the professional level uh, or semi-professional level workflows that they're kind of targeting well, with it. I mean, when you when you get into talking out of both sides of your mouth, uh, which I, I assume you mean in a complimentary fashion that's designed to maximize shareholder value, um, PC World <laughs> uh, you know, got an eyeballs on touring and got a little hands on time with the. Uh, it was like a, you know. Um, a couple of PCs with like Ryzen 7 1800X CPUs, 32 gigs of RAM, SSDs, 4K panels, Windows 10 Enterprise Edition, one with a GeForce Titan XP and the other one with a Radeon Vega Frontier Edition. And, uh, you know, and one of the things they pointed out, like, you know, they were doing a car design. I'm going to quote, uh, I'm going to quote uh, Gordon Ma here. Um, you know, with the Frontier Edition machine running an 8K Dell panel and a second panel at 1080p plus an HTC Vive, AMD opened up a theoretical car design in the SolidWorks engineering application and then did panning and spinning and moving. Uh, you know, then they exported it using AMD's ProRender plugin to Unreal Engine 4 where it could be used using, uh, where it could be viewed using an HTC Vive. Um, and then apparently that's actually a workflow that a lot of small and mid-sized, basically AMD's like a lot of small mid-sized engineering companies, they use this kind of workflow. Um, you know, mm -hmm. technically a game engine is not an engineering app, but it's inexpensive and it's, you know, it's much less expensive than using a proprietary visualization tool. Um, you know, and then they turned around and, and benchmarked it in Kadia and Creo and SolidWorks and Cinebench and a bunch of yep. other stuff. But, you know, it's, it's curious to, uh, you know, it's, it's curious to look at it because, you know, at one point we're all like, oh, you know, does it have the level of precision you need for a professional card? And that doesn't look like it's kind of like the big delineating factor uh, anymore. Um, you know, and this is also, I mean, this is kind of our, our, our pre-look at what's going to be coming in terms of the consumer Vega cards too. our preview, I guess, not pre-look. I don't know what pre-look I means. agreed. And, and that's, and that's honestly what I'm more interested in, right? Um, uh -huh. We, we do professional level reviews. We do quadra reviews. We do Radeon pro reviews, but our bread and butter is gaming. And so the vast majority of our audience is their interest in this is what does this mean for the five or six hundred dollar card when it comes out, right? right? With the assumption being that the performance will be almost exactly this or very close to this. And it's worth noting that there's two versions of this card that have been uh, that have been announced at least. I don't know if the other one has been shipping. This is the air cooled variant that has a 300 right. watt TDP, so quite high. Then they have the water cooled variant that's 375 watts. Um, which as of today, there are there is no like specification difference between the two, which is very confusing right. to me because if you're if you're running water cooling and 75 watts more, you would assume there's more power uh, involved with it. So I'm still kind of well, waiting to well, see what that is. You know, 75 watts, um, you know, and an additional five hundred dollars. It is one and a half times as much as the air cooled version of the card. Um, yeah, yeah, yes, a huge exactly. Price delta there. I'm assuming yep. the the extra cost for the liquid cooling system and the extra wattage is because they're running it at a significantly higher clock and giving you a performance benefit. Um, you'd have to assume. You know. You'd, you'd have so to dangerous. assume. And and I've ordered one of those as well, but it, it, it my ship date was originally July 3rd and then the 9th announced the 15th. So I don't know exactly what's happening for to those particular products. So, and, and it's, <laughs> you know... I mean, we'll see, right? So I plan to have uh, a review and story up by tomorrow sometime after, you know, depending on how long I stay here tonight doing benchmarking and whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to look at, you know, the the six gaming benchmarks that we've looked at over the last couple of reviews. We're going to look at uh, spec view perf and some professional level applications. We're going to look at power consumption. We're going to look at noise. And then we come to right. some conclusion. Now, it's very possible that the Radeon, like the RX version, is nothing like this. Maybe they super bend and they're 250 watts, but they're super power efficient and their performance is, is different than this because of driver changes. I don't think that's true, but maybe. Hmm. And that's what we have to that's what we have to live with until we actually see the RX Vega products, you know, end of next month, early August. So there you have it.